Greetings. Sorry, hold on. Um, get... I don't know, I'm freaking, uh, sorry. Streaming from a cellular device really sucks. Somebody called me, it went to voicemail, and when they were done leaving a voicemail, the stream stopped for some reason. It's illogical, it doesn't make sense why this would be what would happen, but whatever, it's fine, we're just gonna, it's okay. Mm. Where do, I don't know where it stopped. Uh, I'm just gonna start at verse 38. Um... This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angels who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received, he received living oracles to give, a, to give to us. Our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt. Are you messing with the wires? Gosh dang it. Hey. No. Come here. Got all twisted up in the wires again. You know what? You can be up there. Kitten jail, kitten jail. You're stuck in kitten jail. All right. Um. And in their hearts they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, "Make for us gods who will go before us." As for this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made calves in those days and offered a sacrifice, excuse me, to the idols and were rejoicing in the works of their hands. But God turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring to me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your god Rephan, the images, the images that you made to worship and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Verses 35 to 36. Stephen presents Moses as a type of Christian. Both were men whom God sent. Both served as a redeemer. Oh, as a type of Christ, not Christian, sorry. Um, and both performed wonders and signs. Verse 37. Christ is the prophet whom Moses predicted in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Verse thirty-eight, the congregation, uh, the characteristics, uh, New Testament, the characteristic New Testament word for church, the idea that the law was mediated by angels was well established in Judaism. It is repeated in verse fifty-three in Galatians three nineteen and Hebrews two two. Verses forty to forty-one, the golden calf incident illustrates the Israelites' continuing rejection of Moses' leadership and their idolatry. Verses 42 to 43, Stephen continues his description of Israel's idolatry during their um, occupation of the promised land. When they worshipped stars and planets, the host of heaven, to establish th this fact, he quotes the Greek version of Amos chapter 5 verses 25 to 27. Moloch was the Canaanite sun god. The identity... <coughs> nope. Stay over there. Sorry, um, the identity of Rafan is uncertain, but it may be Repa, Repa, the Egyptian name for Saturn. Our fathers had the tent of witness in the wilderness, just as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it, according to the pattern that he had seen. Our fathers in turn brought, brought it into, brought it in with Joshua when they disposed the nations that God that God drove out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked to find a dwelling place for God of ja for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in the houses made by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What, what kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your father did your fathers not persecute? 
and they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as, re as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Verse 44. Stephen turned, uh, turned to the charge made against him regarding the temple. He contrasted the tabernacle or tent with the temple. The temple is not necessary for God's purposes. For in the wilderness, God was worshipped in the, in the tabernacle. In, dis, in distinction from the temple, it was movable, and yet it contained the witness, the stone tablets inscribed with God's laws. Uh, his point was not to make too much of the temple. Verse 48. Stephen quotes Isaiah 66, verses 1 to 2, to establish that God does not dwell in houses. Israel's error was in confining God to the temple. Further, Stephen suggests that neither the tabernacle nor the temple were intended to last forever. Both pointed to something greater that, is, that was to come. Can you get down? Can you? There's a reason you're up there. It's because it's kitten jail. Okay, where was I? Um, psst. No. Mm, ah, verse 51. Stephen concludes with the direct attack, uh, direct attack on Israel for rejecting the Messiah. This seems harsh, but Luke will soon say that Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit, and so his accusation was also led by the Spirit. Psst. Using the Old Testament... He accused his Jewish listeners of being stiff-necked. Uh, see Exodus chapter fifty. I mean thirty-four, verse nine. Uncircumcised in heart and ears. See Deuteronomy ten sixteen and Jeremiah six ten, and resisting of the Holy Spirit. See Isaiah sixty-three ten. Oh, what just happened? I was gone for a second. What just happened? What? Wait, hold on. Sorry, chat is like... Hold on a second. I need to check something. Chat just exploded... Did chat explode? What? Wait. Wait a second. Wait, where... Where did all these... What just happened? Where did... Where did all these people come from? Where did all these followers come from? What is... What? This happened within the span of two minutes. Wait, no, wait, one, like three minutes. What just happened? Um, thank you? I am very confused. Um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, is my is is it just that Twitch is being weird? Um okay. Interesting. Don't know how that happened. Th thank you for growing the bone pile. The you're a bone now. Congrats. You can choose what part of the skeleton you are. Um sorry. I don't know what's going on. Like, I just, I turn, I get up to move beans in, like, back on the ground, come back, and, like, chat is blown up with a bunch of fo followers. Thank you. I'm so confused. Um, but, uh, okay, we're gonna just keep reading. I don't know if this was some sort of glitch or if people actually 
fo followed um in any way cool i'm so i'm so confused oh uh, where where are you messing with the wires again okay good all right uh thanks thanks i am so i'm so confused let's figure okay let's just keep reading let's keep reading let's keep reading figure out where i was i don't know <laughs> this is freaking um <laughs> uh anyway uh verse 52 uh, like Jesus, uh, Stephen accused his Jewish listeners of killing the prophets uh, and of rejecting their ultimate God-sent savior, uh, the righteous one. The stoning of, of uh, the, the stoning of Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. I think it's Stephen. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the, uh, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of the young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. That is so cool. Let's see. Verse 58. Hey, dude, you're going back into kitten jail. Come here, you. You're going back into kitten jail. Get up there. You're going to be stuck there for a while. Anyway. Verse 58. It is debated whether Stephen was stoned on the Sanhedrin's orders or killed by mob violence. The fact that he was appearing before the Sanhedrin in chapter 6 verse 12 favors the former, but the fast nature of the stoning suggests mob behavior. Excuse me. Also, the Sanhedrin uh, did not have the legal right to execute without Roman permission. Verses 59 to 60. Stephen's dying prayer recalls Jesus' words during his crucifixion in Luke chapter 23, verses 34 and 46. Fell asleep is a Christian expression for death, reflecting assurance of a future resurrection. We're moving on now to chapter 8. And Saul approved of his execution. And there, and there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men, uh, devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentations over him. But Saul was ravaging the church. And entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now, what's crazy is that Saul, um, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure he becomes one of the most devout Christians later on. Don't take my word on it, though. We're going to find out when we continue reading uh, through the New Testament. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's him. I'm pretty sure, like, he gets a name change. Um, again, don't quote me on it. Do your own research or, like, read through as you will, if you want to. Anyway, verse 1. They were all scattered. See note on John chapter 7, verse 35. This dispersion led to the fulfillment of the promise in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Also see James 1, 1 and 1 Peter 1, 1. Verse 3. Saul, later called Paul. Yep, see, there we go. Paul, the apostle Paul, uh, was instrumental in the persecution as he testifies later in acts chap in chapter 22 verses 4 to 5 and chapter 26 verses 10 to 11 um and his ep 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 epistles I, I don't know um anyway also a little bit about philip along with stephen 
Philip was one of the seven men chosen to help apostles minister to the early church, referred to as Philip the Evangel Evangelist. In chapter 21, verse 8, he began his ministry in Samaria, where he proclaimed Christ boldly and with power. Like the apostles, Philip had received the Holy Spirit's power to cast out demons and to heal the sick. The Bible says that as a result of Philip's ministry in Samaria, there was much joy in that city. You see this in chapter 8, verse 8. Uh, God later led Philip toward Gaza, where he explained the gospel to the Ethiopian royal official. After baptizing the man, Philip was immediately carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a new area of ministry. Just got teleported by the Holy Spirit. That's, that's so cool. Um, did you know, the Ethiopian mentioned in chapter 8, verses 26 to 40, was an official was an official in the royal court of I think this is literally saying what I just read, but we're going to keep reading it. Uh, was an official in the royal court of Ethiopia, located in what is now Sudan and Ethiopia. Philip found him reading the Old Testament scriptures, which means he was probably a God-fearer, that is, a non-Jew who is seeking to know about the God of Israel. His journey to Jerusalem would, would have taken him three months, a true sign of his, of his sincerity in seeking the Lord. Oh, this is, we're, ju we're literally just about to read this. Um, Philip proclaims Christ in Samaria. Now those who scattered went about, uh, went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds were one accord, uh, and the crowds with one accord paid attention to what, to what was being said by Philip uh, when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. Okay, cool. Beans is just chilling out in my bed. Well, before we continue reading, there's a... Uh, verse 5. Philip most likely uh, visited uh, Sebast, Sebaste, Sebast, the main city of the Samaritans, located at the foot of their holy mountain, uh, Gerizim. The Samaritans were a racial, racially and religiously mixed group of partly Jews and partly Gentile ancestry. They were disliked by both Jews and non-Jews. In verse 6. The Samaritans had their own expectations of a prophetic Messiah. They believed he would come to Mount Gerizim. John the Baptist and Jesus were previously ministered, had previously ministered in this area. See John chapter 3, verse 23, and chapter 4, verse 4 to 42. Like the apostles, Philip had received the Holy Spirit's power to cast out demons and to heal. This confirmed the truth of his message. Excuse me. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of, of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Simon, the magician, believes. But there was a man named Simon, who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him, for the from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid attention to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip. And seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. A profile on Paul. Author of 13 out of 27 New Testament books. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know that. Um, Paul is one of the most important people in the history of the Christian faith. Born in Tarsus uh, with the Hebrew name Saul, he was both a Jew and a Roman citizen. Both a Jew and a Roman citizen. He came to Jerusalem as a young man to be educated by Gamma. Gamaliel, the most famous rab rabbinic scholar of that time. After approving the stoning of Stephen, Saul helped lead a great persecution against the church. Then, on his way to Damascus to arrest believers, he was dramatically converted to the faith. Paul would eventually go on three missionary journeys, winning many people uh, to faith in Christ and establishing churches and cities all across the Roman Empire. 
He was especially effective in explaining the gospel to Gentiles. Paul faced brutal opposition throughout his ministry and eventually was imprisoned. He wrote many of his letters while under house arrest and, in, and later in prison in Rome before being martyred for his faith. Isn't that crazy? Like, one of the guys who started the persecution against the church and helped for a long time became one of the, like, one of the guys who wrote, like, a, a good chunk of the New Testament. That is, that's insane. And it's incredible. It's fantastic. Um, it just goes, it just goes to show that, like, no matter what you've done in your life, like, if you, if you turn, if you turn to God and to Jesus Christ, he will change it completely. He will flip, flip it upside down. It's insane. Like, just look at this guy. Uh, we'll, we'll read more about him later on, but it's, it's incredible. Um, anyway, where was I? Uh, ah, verse 13. Commentators differ over uh, whether Simon had genuine saving faith. Peter's strong rebuke of Simon suggests that he did not. Uh, now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samar Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them. But they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Holy Spirit was given through the laying, of hand, the laying on the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that any one of whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gifts of God with money. You have neither part, part nor lot in the matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven, uh, may, may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the, in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Now when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. Excuse me. And Beans is falling asleep. Where was I? Verse uh, 14. The apostles of Jerusalem retained their authority over the entire church. When they heard of Philip's mission, they sent Peter and John to confirm the accuracy of his message. In verse 17, they received the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to get some water. Uh, the Lord waited to demonstrate the full power of the Holy Spirit until some of the apostles themselves could be present. This, this way, there would be no question at all that the Samaritans had received the Holy Spirit in the same way that the Jewish Christians had in Romans 11, verses 13 to 24, and Ephesians 2, 11 to 22. In verse 18, Simon saw that the Spirit was given. Since Simon observed this, there must have been some outward evidence of the Spirit. This may have been speaking in tongues, prophesying, or both. Offered them money. Magicians often exchanged secrets for money. In verse 21, uh, neither part nor lot is Old Testament language for having no share in something. See Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 27. This seems to indicate that Simon was now shown uh, the condition of his heart, and that he does not belong to God's people. But see note on Acts chapter 8, verse 13, which we already saw that. Uh... Verse 24, whether Simon truly repents is unclear. In verse 25, the apostles' preaching in many villages of the Samaritans fulfills chapter 1, verse 8. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of, her, of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. 
So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you were reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scriptures, now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearers is is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Verses 26 to 27. Gaza was the last watering place before the desert on the road from Jerusalem to Egypt. Ethiopia was the ancient Nubuian, Nubuian kingdom south of Azwa on the Nile. Eunuch. In the Old Testament and New, 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 and New Testament, eunuchs were of royal officials. Some were emasculated, but not all. He had been to Jerusalem to worship, so the eunuch was probably a God-fearer, a Gentile who worshipped Israel's God, but had not become a full convert. Isaiah... Uh, Isaiah promised that God would grant faithful eunuchs as a heritage better than sons and daughters. This is in Isaiah chapter 56, verses 3 to 5. He also promised that Nubuians would worship the Lord in Isaiah chapter 18, verse 7. Verse 30. People usually read aloud in those days, so Philip would recognize that the eunuch was reading Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 to 8. Uh, ah. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and, be and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news of Je about Jesus. And as they were going along, along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water. Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Az Azotus, Azotus. And as he passed through, the, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Caesarea. Uh. Where was I? Ah. Uh, about car being carried away, you can compare Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. In verse 40, Philip was sent to the coastal region, first to Azotus, Old Testament Ashdod, uh, then Kassara, where he seems to have settled. Uh, Kassara, Kassara was a large Greek-speaking population. Oh, had a large Greek-speaking population. Originally a small harbor town, it was rebuilt by Herod the Great with a, uh, with a greatly improved harbor, a hippodrome, and an aqueduct. In Philip's day, it was the seat of the Roman government in Judea. Tense relations exist existed between its Jewish and Gentile inhabitants. All right, that is all for today. Thank you for joining, and for those present viewers, um... Thank you for continuing to watch after it cut out. Again, um, I got like I got a call on my phone and it went to voicemail. And then once the I'm assuming once the voicemail was finished, the stream just cut out. But thank thankfully, um, excuse me, thank the Lord that we were able to continue reading. Cause, uh, as I've said before, I ha I've read some of the uh, New Testament gospels before but not um not much else this is my first time reading fully through um a, a, the study bible version at least of the new testament um so we're all learning together you know i really like this uh because it's got notes but thank you for joining um and i'm glad that i'm very thankful that i, I at least i'm hoping that these are actual people and not like a glitch or something because that means more people will be able to listen um <clears throat> excuse me well thank you for joining uh i might do another stream later maybe i don't know what's to actually no i got work tomorrow anyway 
Oh, Bean Beans is passed out. He's passed out. I'll have to put the, I'll, I'll have to, I'm going to make another area and post pictures of pets and stuff. But um, if you want more resources, you can check out my Discord, which the link should be working. Don't know why it wouldn't be. But um, thank you for joining. Um, and uh, until next time, farewell.